Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today we've got a 2005 Ford F-150 in the shop and we want to do another Top Problems video for you. Let's get started. Okay friends, so you know me. One of the first things that I always like to talk about in these videos is a safety issue. On these Ford F-150s, there's a very big probability that you're going to have a problem with the airbag system. When you have a problem with this airbag system, there's probably going to be two symptoms that you're probably going to notice. One of them is probably going to be just an airbag light on your dash. That's the least problematic. And the second thing that I hope you're probably not going to notice is the airbag itself might actually deploy randomly. You're not even in an impact. That of course could be very bad and it could send you veering off the road or potentially worse. Now fixes that you're going to find for this is going to be something that you're not necessarily going to have to do on your own. Ford actually sent out a recall about this and they're going to take care of it for you. Essentially what they're going to do is they're going to remove the airbag unit. They're going to make sure that they cover those wires with some sort of loom or something protective to make sure that they don't actually get worn through and ground out. And once they fix this for you, you should be good to go down the road. While we're still inside the vehicle, why don't we jump to the second issue that we have on this vehicle and that's the blend door actuators. The issue that happens with these blend door actuators is they just stop working internally. Whether it's a component that fails or it's an electri electrical issue, but it's a problem with the actual actuator itself, which we sell at 1AAuto.com, by the way. Now, the symptoms that you're probably gonna notice for this is once your vehicle is at operating temperature, of course, there should be able to be heat that pumps out of those vents for you to warm you up, right? Well, let's say you go ahead and you turn that blend door switch so that it's gonna go to full heat, but maybe you feel around your vents and it seems like it's still blowing cold. Well, why is that? Like I said, it's because of the blend door actuator. It's very common for these to go bad on this. And like I said, it is something that we sell at 1AAuto.com. The next thing we're gonna talk about on these vehicles is the spark plugs. There's gonna be a couple different issues that you're probably gonna notice. One spark plug is gonna look a lot like this. The problem with these spark plugs, and this is more than likely on the six cylinder version of these engines, is the fact that the spark plug will actually work its way out of the cylinder because the threading that's supposed to be inside the cylinder that holds all these threads, it, the cylinder actually only has about half this amount of threads, maybe like five threads tapped into it. So you have only five threads out of all these that are actually holding in. Over time, the combustion gases and the heat and everything that's going on inside of that combustion chamber starts forcing the carbon and everything up inside these threads. And of course the air starts wiggling around once it breaks free, it can just kind of keep loosening. And once it loosens up completely, pops right out of the engine. The other thing that you might notice with these engines, especially on the Triton with the three valve engines, it's gonna be a different type of spark plug. And with that, you're actually gonna notice the spark plug doesn't wanna come out. When it comes time to replacing those spark plugs, you're gonna to have to use a specialty socket. More than likely, it's gonna look something like this. It's a nice extended socket. That way there it gets down nice and deep inside those um, tubes that lead down to where the spark plug is. And then you'll have a nice good grip and it won't be flexing around too much. Because of course, if you were to have it like that and it can flex around because you have a smaller socket on there with a big old jumbo extension, you could flex it around and potentially break your spark plug, which if you're replacing it anyway, it doesn't really matter so much. But if you're just checking it or doing routine maintenance and you want to make sure it was good, obviously you don't wanna break it. But with that said, we're gonna continue on to the fact that the spark plugs do like to break inside of the actual engine. And that's due to the upgraded design of the spark plug. They actually have like an extended little piece that comes down here. And so what happens is, is they'll actually adhere uh, due to the heat and the carbon and everything that's going on inside of that engine combustion chamber. It actually almost welds, we'll say. It's not a real weld, so don't hold me to that, but it almost welds to the actual inside of that cylinder head. So when you go to take this out, it doesn't want to break free. And when it does, you might notice your spark plug will break up along here, which is less common up around there. You might also notice that even though your socket's grabbing onto this hex head, it'll actually break off right along this area right here. And so you'll have the whole bottom area of the spark plug stuck inside the engine. Like I said, this isn't the spark plug that I'm actually talking about on the Triton uh, three valve engines. This one's a little bit different, but if you were to imagine it having the longer shank, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about that whole area just gets stuck inside the engine and it can become a major issue. So now for fixes for this, if you were talking about the spark plug that had loosened up and kind of made its way out, more than likely you damage the threads that are on the inside of that head. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to retap that head. There's a special kit that you can get that's gonna make it so you'll have, basically it'll hone out the threads 
and then you make new threads, you put in a little Healy coil, and then of course you can put in your spark plug and you should be good to go. And then of course if you were to talk about the spark plugs on the three valve Tritons that get frozen inside the engine, one Auto has your back. We've got our little kit here, all right? And this is gonna take care of all the business for you. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier and you're gonna appreciate it. Something to keep in mind is when you're actually doing those three valve spark plugs and you're worried about them being frozen inside the engine because more than likely at least one or two of them will be, it's a great idea to run some sort of cl uh, carbon cleaning system through the engine prior to doing this service. And then also it's important to remember when you try to break those spark plugs free, you don't wanna really jam it. You wanna just try to go nice and slow and you wanna listen for a little crackling sound. You want it to be like because that's gonna be the threads trying to break free in there. If you go like this real quick, more than likely you're just gonna break that spark plug right off and you're gonna have a major issue. Now the next thing I wanna to talk to you about on these vehicles involves coil packs. And it's probably gonna come up with a symptom basically that looks a lot like a check engine light on your dash. And if you were to pull the code, it's gonna come up with something saying along the lines of maybe P0301 to P0308. Essentially each one of those numbers, the one through the eight at the end there, is gonna designate which cylinder has the issue. With that said, let's get into it. Now these coil packs are known to have issues. They go faulty inside, it's just bound to happen. When it happens, like I said, it's gonna trip a little check engine light for you, you're gonna pull the code, and it's gonna tell you about where to look. It's gonna tell you which cylinder that uh, is showing that it has the issue. Well now, let's say that you pull that coil out and you wanna make sure that it's working. How are you gonna test it? Well, what's the most simple way to test it? You just pick a cylinder that's either right next to it or even on the other side of the engine from it and swap them real quick. At that point, you would run the vehicle and if you notice that the misfire happened to move to the area that you just put that coil in, then you know that the issue was the coil. If for some reason the issue didn't move and it was still remaining on the same cylinder, then of course you would move along to testing to see if that spark plug is in good condition and of course to make sure you have compression in the cylinder. Now let's go with the assumption that after you switch that coil pack over to the other cylinder, maybe the issue didn't change. It's still in that same original cylinder. Well, what's the next couple things that you're gonna check? You wanna check for fuel pressure, compression, and you also wanna make sure that you have a good spark coming from that spark plug. Now the next problem I wanna talk to you about on these is the exhaust manifolds. Super common, let's talk about it. So now some of the symptoms that you're gonna notice from this is basically mostly a ticking noise. You might also notice a little bit of a smell of exhaust fumes, but that's a little less likely. With what I'm talking about with the ticking noise, it's mostly gonna be heard when the engine's cold. The reason for that is because once the engine heats up and it starts expelling that hot air out through the exhaust, of course the metal on the manifold is gonna expand and close up the imperfections on the manifold, which more than likely would be a crack. Now, a crack manifold isn't the only reason why you might hear this ticking noise. There might not necessarily be anything wrong with the manifold, but it could actually be a broken exhaust stud. The exhaust studs are actually inserted into the engine block, and then of course you would have the manifold gasket, the manifold, and then you would have some nuts that hold the manifold up against the gasket to the engine. Over time, these studs, of course, due to all the heat and the moisture and everything that they get all around them all the time, they tend to rot away and then they'll probably break. Generally speaking, it's more than likely gonna be one of the studs probably closest to the firewall. Seems like it's the most common one to break. With that said, when that stud breaks, there's a very real possibility that the manifold is gonna be able to pull away from the engine block a little bit, especially if it's on one of the corners, like I said, farthest towards the firewall. When this happens, it creates an air gap. Of course, the gasket's gonna deteriorate more over time, so you're gonna notice the ticking noise seems like it gets louder. And at this point, more than likely, you're gonna start really noticing an exhaust fume smell. Now, obviously, exhaust fumes are a very big safety issue. You don't wanna be breathing in any of that carbon monoxide, so you need to fix any exhaust issue ASAP. With that said, depending on which issue you had, whether it was a cracked manifold or the broken stud, would lead you in the direction that you would need to fix. If you have a broken stud, you wouldn't necessarily have to replace the manifold, although, it is good practice to remove the manifold fully and then have it planed. At the same time as it's being planed, you'd want to visually inspect the whole manifold to make sure you don't see any cracked areas. If you see anything that looks like a crack, well, now's the time to replace it. 
And of course, if it's just a cracked manifold, you would want to replace the manifold with the new gasket. Now, of course, if you do have to drill out one of those manifold studs, 1A Auto sells a kit that's gonna work perfect for that. Now, the reason for this kit would be because when you go to drill out these studs, let's say that it is broken and more than likely it's probably flush with the engine block, you're gonna have to dr drill a little center hole or a pilot hole, okay? Once you do that, you would of course step up your bit to the next corresponding bit until of course you got to the size of the actual stud. The problem with that is a lot of times when you're trying to drill out the steel uh, stud that's going into the engine, if you go a little bit at an angle, you're gonna cause major issues and of course you could actually puncture the coolant jacket inside, which would be very bad. Okay friends, so we tried to make a nice educational video for you about top problems with the 05 Ford F-150. Are there gonna be more problems? Yeah. Are there gonna be tons of great things about the vehicle? Yeah. Overall, would I say it's a great vehicle to have? Of course I would. Every vehicle has its problems, and this one's just like the rest. With that said, almost every one of these parts that we went over inside this list, 1A Auto actually sells, including some of the tools that would make the job much easier for you overall. While I've got you here, if you like the video, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Boom! While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. And while I still got you here, why don't you go ahead and leave me a comment, let me know if there's something I missed or even if there's just something you want to say. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.